This is the fifth year of the Prophet's migration. We call it the fifth year of Hijrah. Towards the end now. After the Battle of Khandaq, the Prophet ﷺ went to the masjid and declared to everyone. He gave them an enormously good news. He said to all the Muslims, Quraysh will never attack us after this day. Don't worry about them. They're no longer going to be able to defeat us. So far up to this point, it has been battles of defense. And now it's going to change from a defense to something called an offensive battle. Now the Muslims turn to go over and attack them. In this time, some really interesting events happened. The first one, we call it Sariyatul Al-As or Al-Is, is because of this man by the name of Abu Al-As. He's from the people of Mecca. He is the husband of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's daughter. He is the husband of Zainab. He married her before Islam. And when the Hijrah happened, they were still married until when the migration happened. And Zainab went to Abyssinia and from there she went to Medina. Abu al-As remained in Mecca. He didn't follow her, he didn't want to join her. So she was without her husband. And honestly she loved him and he loved her. So what happened here? There was a young man by the name of Zayd ibn Haritha. This man Zayd, radiallahu anhu, very beloved to the Prophet He lived with him and was raised with the Prophet He's the famous one that went with him to al Ta'if, if you know the story. Probably his late 30s now, Zayd ibn Haritha. And what happened is that he was the leader of this particular expedition. What happened? There was a caravan going from Mecca to Syria. And you know, now it's offensive. Now they have to stop all the caravans that are going to Syria because they're going to make money, they're going to get stronger. So Zayd ibn Haritha went there and he saw this caravan coming along and they intercepted it, took it over and they returned with all the merchandise that was on it, lots of wealth, returned it back to the Muslims in Medina and with some captives. Among the captives was Abu al-As, the husband of Zainab So when they captured him, he didn't realize that it was his son-in-law. So the Prophet ﷺ went into the masjid, he's praying, and after he was about to say Allahu Akbar, and Zainab, his daughter, was with them in the jama'ah, in the back, and Zainab stood up. She didn't make that bid with them. She yelled. She said, everyone bear witness that Abu al-As is under my protection. No one can harm him. No one can take him. When he finished the prayer, the Prophet's companions came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, you know, what's, what's this about? You know, what's going on? And he said, Wallahi, I don't know. No one advised me. I didn't even know that Abu al-As was among them. I had no idea. So the Prophet had no business in the matter. But from the mercy of the Prophet and his excellent leadership, he gathered his companions. He just casually got him and said, Give me advice. What should I do with Abu al-As? What should I do with my son-in-law? And all of them said, Ya Rasulullah, for your daughter Zainab, the daughter of the Prophet Sallallahu we all agree none of us is going to go against her. And so Abu al-As became protected under Zainab. And the Prophet Sallallahu said to Zainab, Ya Zainab, he is your husband. And he said, except that he's not allowed to stay with you under the same roof because a mushrik cannot cohabitate with a Muslim woman like this. That's what he said. But he didn't annul their marriage. He still kept the contract of marriage still there. And then the Sahabas, they looked at Abu al-As and they were in favor of Zainab and the Prophet ﷺ and they said, Ya Rasulullah, out of love for you and love for your daughter, we accept protection for all of them. All the people who are with Abu al-As and the Prophet ﷺ said, you have to let Abu al return back to his home in Mecca. And they said, we'll return all his captives with him. 
and all their wealth. So they returned the entire wealth, all the captives, for the love of Zainab radiallahu anha and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now Abu al-As went back, and obviously Abu al-As, when he was there, he was listening to the Quran. He was in the masjid. He was seeing how the Muslims interact with each other, and this shows you that non-Muslims are allowed in the mosque. And then Abu al-As returned. Now, no one knew that Abu al-As had a little love for Islam after hearing all of this, but he didn't tell anyone. Why? Because of his sincerity. He didn't want anyone to think that if he had embraced Islam in Medina, they would say, oh, you only did it because you're afraid. He wanted to let it be out of his own will. Subhanallah. So he returned back to Mecca. He returned the people back to their families and he gave them the wealth. And he said to the people of Quraysh, have I given you your trust back? They said, yep, you've done it all. Thank you. And then he declared, bear witness, I am a Muslim. They hated him, they swore at him, they abused him. He left and went back to Medina. The Prophet ﷺ allowed Abu al-As and Zainab to resume their marriage. He did not make a new marriage contract. We move on now. What happened next? Well, there was this tribe called Bani Mustaliq. This is another big tribe. This big tribe is almost as big as Quraysh. And what happened is that the Prophet ﷺ knew about them, that they had declared enmity to Islam, and they were a threat. So it was real that they were going to attack sooner or later. And they did not agree to any peace agreement with them. They wanted to remain allies with Mecca and to remain an opposition, an enemy. The first thing the Prophet ﷺ offered them was actually a peace agreement before. Then after that, he gave them a second chance saying, look, I invite you to learn about Islam, to convert to Islam. And they said, what's this? We've never known this before. And so they refused. So he went there with a large number of companions. And subhanAllah, when they reached Banil Mustaliq, that tribe, all they did was they entered. A few of their men tried to defend. And the Muslims within minutes, within minutes, they took over the whole city with only minor casualties. And that's when the Arabs started realizing that the Muslims are really becoming strong. That's it. When they arrived in Medina, there was a woman, it's very interesting, among them, among that tribe. Her name was Juwayriya. Juwayriya had an inclination towards Islam. She's always heard about Islam and she liked it. So she said, to the Prophet I've always loved Islam, but my people, I was afraid of them. So now, would you accept me if I become a Muslim? The Prophet welcomed her. The Prophet was so impressed by her sincerity that he offered to marry her. And she accepted. She became Juwayri, radiallahu anha, the mother of the believers, as a result of his marriage to her. The, there became a new relationship between him and the entire tribe of Banil Mustaliq. As a result, for the honor of Juwayriya, the companions gathered and said, Ya Rasulullah, we want to free all of the captives and return their wealth and return them back to their land. The Prophet ﷺ did so and the companions did so out of love for the Prophet's wife, mother of the believers, Juwayriya. Now, why did she become a Muslim? She told him, I saw a dream, Ya Rasulullah, before coming here. I saw a dream that a light was shining onto this, these hills over here from the skies. And I knew that this was a sign that you are special, a special man. So I learned about Islam, I converted. Aisha radiallahu anha, the Prophet's wife, she said, I do not know of any woman who was more of a barakah who received more barakah from Allah, and Allah gave barakah out of her, more than Juwayriya. That all her tribe was released and freed, turning them into allies for the Muslims. The entire tribe converted to Islam. Because of one woman. As they were returning back to Medina from this place, halfway through, something terrible happened. I want you to listen carefully. There was an ex-slave, of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu who had converted to Islam and was freed. And he was considered one of the people of Quraysh. And another ex-slave who also 
converted to Islam and was freed by his master from Medina, from the Ansar. They were fetching water from the well together and something happened between them, a disagreement. And somehow the shaitan got in between them and one of them said something about the other person's background and then the other one said something about the other person's background about Quraysh and he said something about the Ansar which led them to a feud and it turned almost into a tribal feud which was about to turn into a battle between them between the, the Ansar and the Muhajirin the Prophet ﷺ heard about this he was in his tent and he was just dressed in, very, in, a, in a, a very simple gown and then he got up he did not even think of wearing his slippers and, and settled the matter between them. He said to them a very interesting statement. He said, Are you going to revert back to the stinkiness, the, the bad smell of jahiliyyah? And I'm still among you. The Messenger of Allah is among you. And you already are returning back to jahiliyyah. Leave it alone. For it is a stinking carcass. Nothing comes out of tribalism and nationalism except for ugliness. Who heard about this incident? Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salud. He is the first man who developed this uh, system of hypocrisy. A hidden enemy in the ranks. Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salud, he seized the opportunity and he made a terrible statement. He gathered some hypocrites among him and some weak Muslims and he said to them, Wow, so now they've reached this far, the nerve they have. Those Qurayshites, hmm. they've come into our land, outnumbering us. They're going to take over our livelihood, and soon we're left with nothing. Kick them out. You fatten a dog too much, he'll eat you one day. And then he said, Wallahi, when we return back to Medina, when we arrive, we are going to separate the honorable from the peasants and kick out the peasants. You are the ones who made them this way you, and you made them greedy. So you better not pay zakat anymore till they leave and get out. That's what Abdullah ibn said to the hypocrites around. There was a young boy about the age of 16, young man. His name was Uzaid ibn al-Arqam. He went to the Prophet وسلم, and told him exactly what Abdullah ibn Ubn ibn Salu said. As soon as he got that news, Prophet got scared of, of this news spreading around. So Umar ibn Khattab comes along and he says, Ya Rasulullah, he's a hypocrite. And what did the Prophet say to him? He said, Ya Umar, do you want them to say that Muhammad kills his companions? So he said, now's not the time, Ya Umar. The Prophet picks up the army and before they start talking about it, he says, let's move, let's move, let's say, busy them. As they were moving, they reached a certain distance. One of the chiefs of, of Medina, his name is Usaid radiallahu anhu, a very smart man, said, Ya Rasulullah, you got us to move suddenly. What's going on? Is there anything going on? And so the Prophet ﷺ told him what Abdullah ibn Ubayyim Salud said. Usaid said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, you are the honorable and he is the peasant and his people. But the Prophet ﷺ said, No, leave him alone. He is a man. We came into a time when he was about to become a leader. You know, he's hurt, he's angry, he's saying stupid things. And then the news spread among the companions about Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salud. Who did it reach? It reached his son. His name was also Abdullah. He had converted to Islam and he was sincere. When he heard about it, he comes to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, Wallahi, you are the honorable and my father is the peasant. You are the messenger of Allah. And you know, I am the most honorable to my dad. I'm the most obedient to my dad. He said, Ya Rasul, let me do it. And he said, no, no. And he made dua for him. Then he said, we will approach your father with peace and leniency. Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salul, he hears about this news and he comes to the Prophet ﷺ very quickly. He realizes that he's not strong enough to fight the Prophet ﷺ and his army. So he regrets, runs to the Prophet ﷺ and says to him, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, whatever was said about me is a complete lie. It's baseless. There's no truth to it. You are the messenger of Allah and I love you. The Prophet ﷺ knew he was lying. But all the Prophet ﷺ did was he nodded. Just nodded. Okay. He's thinking about the lesser of the two evils. Now who's in the problem? That kid. The 16 year old kid who, made the, who said the truth. And now everybody's saying, oh it's a lie, it's a lie. And the kid, Zayd, 
he goes back to his tent and starts to cry. He goes, man. Then Allah revealed the verses. They weren't naming them. They were just giving characteristics of hypocrites. And what do the verses say? It is they who say, give nothing to those who are with the Messenger of Allah so that they may disperse. They say so although the treasures of the heavens and the earth belong to Allah, but the hypocrites do not understand. They say, when we return to Medina, the honorable ones will drive out from it those that are, that are not, the peasant ones. In truth, all honor belongs to Allah and to His Messenger and to the believers, but the hypocrites do not know. So he exposed Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. This is exactly what he said. However, Abdullah comes along and says it's a lie. And then when the verses were revealed, he's stuck. As the Muslims were entering Medina, his son, Abdullah, when the verses came down, he got angry. He takes out his sword. He stands at the gate. And the Prophet ﷺ and the companions didn't know what Abdullah, this son of the hypocrite, was trying to do. He was angry, he took his sword out, just tapping it on the ground, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then his father comes along, the hypocrite, and he places the sword on his chest, his son. And he says to him, you ain't going in. How dare you slander the messenger of God and call him the peasant? Wallahi, he is the honorable and you are the peasant, father. Abdullah says, what are you talking about? What do you want then? He says, I will not let you go in until the Prophet ﷺ himself gives you permission. The Prophet ﷺ comes along, he hears about the news, and he says to him, let him go. What happened next? The Prophet ﷺ went on a little journey once with a carib with a few companions, expedition. And it was a habit of the Prophet ﷺ. He would put his wife's names in a basket and he would take out a name. And whichever wife's name came out, she would accompany the Prophet ﷺ on his journey. So Aisha's name, radiallahu anha, came up and he took her with him. Now Aisha radiallahu tells her story. She says, I was still very light. And what, what they had was they had an oasis. You know, you, know that, you know the carriage they carry on their shoulders and they put it onto the camel? So she said they couldn't really feel if I was in there or not because I was so light. And uh, we reached a certain place and I needed to go to the bathroom. On her way back she said, I, I noticed I had a necklace and I'd forgotten it had fallen off. So I went back to get it. When I returned, I found that they had moved on without me. And I was stuck there by myself in the middle of nowhere. So I sat down and I said, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun, and I started to cry. And uh, there was a man by the name of Safwan, radiallahu anhu. He used to walk behind the caravans a fair distance to make sure no one has left anything behind. When he reached, Aisha Ghana said, Safwan had known what I looked like. He saw me, he saw my face. And then she just covered herself a bit, telling him, don't come near me. And then Safwan came close and he realized that it was me, Aisha, the mother of believers. And then he, she said, Wallahi, he did not say a single word other than, Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun. To Allah belonging to him will return. Respectfully, he kneeled down with his back to me and brought his camel and lowered his camel. I understood, he didn't even say anything, I understood that I should climb up. I climbed onto the camel, wallahi, he did not look at me once, other than that once, to know who I am. And he took the camel all the way without a word between me and him, until we reached Medina. Now the Prophet wasallam, he didn't know that as soon as they arrived, who sees them? Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salaf, the hypocrite. And he's, he's got a grin on his face. This is a great opportunity. He goes, this is a plan. He goes, everyone, Wallahi, he's not safe from her and she's not safe from him. It's a statement that goes any way you want to interpret it. He didn't say they commit zina, adultery. He didn't say they did anything, really. And he didn't say they didn't do anything. So what he did was he caused doubt in the minds of the people. And Aisha Ghalana didn't hear this, nor did Safwan. She goes to her house, the Prophet ﷺ goes to pray in the masjid, and then the news starts to spread. And unfortunately, three of the companions themselves accused Aisha of zina. Their names were 
Hamna bint Ujash, who is the sister of Zainab bint Ujash, the Prophet sister-in-law. And there was another Sahabi who fought in Badr. His name was Mustih radiallahu anhu. And he said she committed zina. And Hassan ibn Thabit, the poet of the Prophet they accused Aisha of committing zina. No witnesses. They did not ask her to verify. They did not investigate. Just hearsay, rumors. The news got to the Prophet He got uncomfortable. So he started naturally changing his approach towards his wife Aisha. She said, I had no idea what was going on. And suddenly the Prophet ﷺ enters the house. Normally he's cheerful, he's smiling. But this time he entered and he was cold. So I said to him, Ya Rasulullah, is it okay with you if I just leave and go and stay with my parents because I'm, I'm a bit sick, you know, just until I recover? The Prophet ﷺ said, yeah, you can go. So she went to Abu Bakr, her father, and her mother. She stayed there. She goes, Wallahi, I was sick. I had a fever. I didn't know what was going on. Nothing. And the news started to spread more and more. So the Prophet ﷺ goes to the mosque secretly and without Aisha knowing. He calls the Muslims and he says to them, O oh people, Wallahi, I do not know anything about my wives except that they are pure. And I don't know anything upon them. And I know them better. So what is this that is saying, that people are saying about them, about my wife? And one man from the Aws, the, he stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, if he is from the Khazraj, we will chop his neck off. And he's talking about Abdullah ibn Ubayy ibn Salud. Another guy from the Khazraj, he stood up and he goes, Wallahi, you only said that because he is from the Khazraj tribe. If he was from the Aws tribe, you wouldn't say that. They're almost about to fight. The Prophet ﷺ realizes this is going to cause a war between them. So he comes down, calms the situation down, says, just forget about it, don't talk about it. He goes back and now he's waiting for a wahi, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reveal her innocence. So a few days passed, the verses were not revealed. And Aisha goes out with a woman who was friends with her, sorry. She was the mother of Mustih. Remember Mustih, the companion who fought in Badr? She's walking with her to fetch some water or something. And then the water spilled and Umm Mustih, she cursed her own son. She said, curse you, you know, Mustih. And then Aisha said to her, Ya Umm Mustih, why would you curse your only son? Your, your son who fought in Badr? He's a companion of the Prophet. He's an honorable man. Why would you curse him? She said to him, didn't you hear your Aisha? The entire Medina is talking about it. He's accused you of zina. Aisha, she goes, I almost fainted, I fell to the floor, I had a fever, I became pale, I became red, and she had to carry me back to the house. I was hurt, and I started to cry and cry and cry night and day. I could not sleep, I could not eat. I cried night and day for about two or three nights. Why would people say this about me? Suddenly the Prophet ﷺ enters, and she, he says, he sees his wife crying, and he says, Ya Aisha, if you have done something minor, you know, you've done something, you know, you're human, okay. Then repent to Allah, ask Him to forgive you. For a Muslim who admits their sin and then asks Allah to forgive that sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept it. Aisha says, I was crying and suddenly I could not cry anymore. I was in shock and suddenly I became angry. And I said to my father, Abu Bakr, Ajibu, defend me. Bakr Gawain says, what, what do you want me to say? It's the messenger of God. She turns to her mother, defend me. She says, what do you want me to say? I want my sense to the messenger of God. And she turns away and says, Wallahi, I will not say astaghfirullah al for something I didn't do. I'm going to say what? And because she was so, like, she couldn't think anymore. She's trying to find out the name of Yaqub, Yaqub, the father of Yusuf. He goes, just like, you know, Abu Yusuf, what he said, I complain my sadness and sorrow to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She turned away from the Prophet and waited. Until within about an hour to two hours, the Rasul received a wahi. He received revelation from Jibreel, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Jibreel. In Surah An Nur, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this occasion without mentioning Aisha radiallahu anha her name. And in that surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those who spoke about the ifk means when somebody spreads a rumor and they know it's a lie 
if is the worst type of spreading rumors. He said they are a group of people. Among them are those who are the hypocrites, don't fear Allah. There were among those of your companions and the, and the Muslims who said, Oh Allah, we are innocent from these claims. We do not allow our tongues to say anything but the truth. There are some groups, they, they said, Glory be to Allah, this is a terrible accusation. And they moved away. Allah Ta'ala says, praises them and says Allah rewards them, Allah blesses them. And then he said that there were groups of people who said, which they knew was a lie and did not investigate. Perhaps Allah will forgive them. So, when Rasulullah received this, he knew it was about Aisha radiallahu anha, and he said, Ya Aisha, as for Allah, He has declared your innocence. Immediately, her father, Abu Bakr Siddiq and her mother, they called Aisha and said, Ya Aisha, get up to the Messenger of God and you go and hug him, go and go to him. You know what she said? She said, La wallahi wa Allah, I will not go to Rasulullah. The only one I will thank today is Allah, for He is the one who declares my innocence. My brothers and sisters in Islam, then after that, an amazing thing happened. We all know that there's been battles, the, the Meccan, the Kuffar against the Muslims all this time. They've been a threat, the Muslims can't live their life. And finally the Battle of the Trenches was over. Then the turning point. The Treaty of Hudayba. 